Well, hi everybody, it's Chris Brogan. I'm here to answer some of your questions for Blog Topics Masterclass, Blogging the Masterclass. Ah, I forgot I renamed it. Um, Leo asked the question, what do you think if the blog has dual or multiple language? Uh, what are the pros and cons? Well, if you are serving and selling into a market that's, that English isn't necessarily the native language, that's a plus. Uh, if you were trying to lure people, I mean, the question is, who's the reader that you care about that you need for your buyer? That's why you should consider two languages. Um, a lot of my friends uh, who are working on the Hispanic market, for instance, have Spanish-only blogs now. And uh, they're finding much better uh, uptake because people feel like it's for them. Uh, it's a matter of what you're trying to land and who you're trying to land, and then it's a matter of how much content you actually want to keep creating and recreating. Uh, question two, if I posted my blog, the article consists of an interview with two or three people, kind of a newspaper or magazine style, do you, will increase the credibility of my blog. Um, interview versus some other content type, does it make your credibility better or worse? Uh, what makes your credibility better or worse are a lot of other things. Uh, do I see on the about page who you are? Do I see a picture of your human head at some place? Do I, um, does the site design look like it's really professional and credible or does it look like something made by, um, you know, amateurs? Does it, is there something to do with, um, you know, what kind of ads you put on there? What kinds of uh, credentials you also put on there? Those are the kinds of things you're going to want to look at. That's what makes credibility happen. Uh, let's see. What happens? Pat asked the question. It's a really good question. When a new blogging the master class person jumps on board, what would, uh, what's good for them or what's not good for them? So that's interesting because there's also uh, interesting to see what the people are you know, having for challenges or whatever. Um, let's see. What other questions do I see here? What's the difference between a website and a blog? A blog is just a type of website. A blog is uh, sequential content. You can use blogging software to build a website, though. I mean, all of my business websites are built on WordPress, which is technically blogging software. I just expose pages instead of the blog posting area uh, for my content. How do you protect the content on your blog and website? I don't. Uh, nobody does. And usually you just try to find the thieves where you can. And this, even that, it's not even worth the time. Uh, what are pros or cons for providing a comment section? Uh, the cons are that it takes a lot of time if you do it right and that you have to watch for spam all the time and the pros are that you can engage in conversations. Uh, most blogs have comment sections by their very nature but some very famous people do not and I'm actually considering pulling it off as well. That's more from Leo. So let's see, I have questions from Inga. What is the best but most importantly fastest way to upload my presence digitally? Uh, Let's see. I don't know. So fastest never works with anything. There's no fastest. Let's say you said to me, I want to go on a date and how fast could that be? You know what I mean? So like what good is that? You know, fast is rarely the best answer. Some of the other things that would be better for you would be to think about uh, how do I start building it today so that I'll be ready for tomorrow. Uh, you want to build yourself on just not the commercial real estate sites, you know, in your business. You want to build them on personal sites. You want to have a presence on some of the social networks so that people can get to see you in other lights. Uh, and you do want some kind of a blog so that people can understand your personality and who you are. We buy from people we like, and so the opportunity is to connect and do that sort of thing. Mark has a question. Are there different steps or platforms than presented in this course to scale blogging throughout an organization? Sure. I mean, there's different blogging software if you want. There's also uh, sort of a WordPress multi-user. Uh, it's called WordPress MU. So you can do multi-blog uh, authoring that way. You can, you can do it with regular WordPress. It's just some of the management tools inside of WordPress MU are better. And then if you're using other software, of course, then there's all kinds of other rules and whatnot. There's many other C, uh, CMSs, content management systems, that you can use for a corporation. But WordPress runs on, you know, 21% of all sites on the Internet now. So I'm a big fan of that. Uh, is there some magic to discovering influencers in my area of interest? You know, there's lots of tools out there now to do that. Uh, let me just see uh, who's offering that kind of stuff lately. Uh, there's Twitter tools. There's, let me just narrow my search to about a year. Let's see. I mean... A lot of people uh, look at things like Simply Measured, for instance. Uh, that's kind of specific to Twitter. Uh, Communit, by the way, which is uh, run by, by a friend of mine, actually. C-O-M-M-U-N dot I-T. Um, Sherelle Omar 
uh, that's you know a kind of a Twitter one. The only challenge is you know so many of these kinds of tools uh, are flawed. Like a lot of people like Clout. I don't like Clout. Some people like Peer Index. I don't like Peer Index. I mean, what I would start to do instead of you know the way influencing works is I would start to look for who's talking about stuff in your area and who has a good blog and website and presence where people are taking some kind of action. Uh, there's no magic bullet to it, but you could certainly do what you can to uh, get some response that way. Uh, what are the benefits and risks to a company to own their own blogging platform like WordPress versus outsourcing to a platform like Medium? Anytime you outsource to some other platform, you are at the mercy of their rules. So if you violate their code, if you if they decide to close, if they change their rules, if you decide to port from one thing to another, all of those things are a challenge. It's most often better to own your stuff. Um, I'm writing a book. Should I release the chapters as a series or try to self-publish like Lulu, Amazon, or iTunes publisher? Um, you know, the, the, the sort of fork in the road for self-publishing is this. Uh, if you just need lots of people to see it, uh, then you should self-publish. If you are trying to make more money than you are uh, influenced, then you should self-publish. If you need some sort of credibility, then even though self-publishing is widely accepted, you might want to try to find a mainstream publisher. I'm a bigger fan of self-publishing, even though my very last book, uh, Freak Shell and Hurt the Earth, was uh, mainstream published. My next book right after it will be self-published again. Um, Sheila asked a question. She said, you know, you talked about setting up an, a, a human-minded about page. And I couldn't really find the details. Uh, so first off, you know, not to say mine's the best in the whole wide world, but go to chrisbrogan.com slash about and see what you think there. I think that's, you know, a, a pretty good start to that sort of a thing. Uh, another thing to think about is that um, you want to look at, you know, putting a human head on it, a little bit about yourself, but not a lot about yourself. And write all of the about yourself, in the, not in the terms of how great you are and how amazing you are, but in the terms of what you do to help other people. That's what other people want. You do want to put some social credibility and social proof in there. Uh, mine is sort of a mix. I also write my about page in the third person. The reason I do that is for Google. Google will help me, uh, you know, be seen a little bit better. So Mark asked these questions so far back that I, I can't apologize enough. Mark, sorry. Uh, Mark has five questions. In Boston, we talked about the imperfect post, the idea that you invite participants to share their point of view and allow them to enrich the content. I mentioned that I'd always tried to nail the answer from the get-go. So what if your post leaves room for others, but nobody comments? Would you A, get a friend to add something to get the comment started, B, make up a comment yourself and quote an anonymous source, or C, just leave it because it might be a boring topic that nobody cared about? My real answer, C. I would, I, if, you know, if no one cares, then Keep moving on. It might be a great idea to you. It might not be the great idea for someone at that time. Comments do not determine your worth. Comments have nothing to do with whether or not you're worthy. My comments have been going down uh, month after month for the last 10 years. So, hooray, blogging is interesting. Nobody cares anymore. So that's the deal. I fell off the writing wagon last spring when I went on tour and I can't seem to get back on. My routine was to write in the morning from 5 to 7. That's when I'm clearest. Uh, but I can't get my lazy butt out of bed anymore. Actually, I need to sleep more than my client project keeps me busy. Uh, how do you shift your work habits to adapt to changing circumstances? Time quilting is fine as a concept, but in reality, there's only so much productive time and available in a day that can be used for writing. Um, I'll tell you all the answers that I know. Um, get healthier. That's number one. My sleep, uh, I, I sleep a lot. I sleep between eight to 10 hours a day, but I could get by on four hours sleep because I'm so healthy now. Because I have really good fueling, lots of great food in my body, incredible water. I take more than a gallon of water a day or for you, four liters of water a day. Um, I, you know, the fitness has made it so that when I do get my sleep, I sleep stronger. Um, and then I don't believe that you can't find time in a day. I think you're choosing to use your time in a different way. I would say audit your time and I think you'll find where you're eating it up. Are you watching some TV series? Because that's your writing time. Are you having to wind it down with a glass of wine for an hour every night? That's your writing time. You have time where you can do it. You just have to sort of slot what you want to do. And if your day is scheduled way over, like to 100% every single day, then you're doing your day wrong. Uh, work like you're on vacation would be the course I'd recommend. Uh, I love the idea of the conversational tone. You do a great job in one of the fundamental principles of DM writing. I don't know what DM means. Dungeon master writing? Uh, but sometimes I'm fearful that it will seem somehow unprofessional on a corporate blog, specifically my agency's blog. That's really weird. So being conversational and human uh, would seem unprofessional. Uh, no, I don't believe that. I believe that people want that. I think that um, 
I've spoken to the CEOs of really big companies. I spoke to uh, Fritz Henderson, who was chairman of General Motors for a while until Obama fired him. I spoke to Bob Iger, who was the head of Disney. I spoke to Sir Richard Branson. He's an outlier. Um, these people all want humanistic people. I spoke to the heads of a healthcare company. You would think healthcare pretty stuffy, right? They still want human. When I make a fart joke or a poop joke or something like that in front of them, they're still human. You don't have to go that far, I promise, because like I'm crazy and I don't care what people think anymore. Uh, but I would say that you want to uh, not worry so much about the conversational tone. I don't mean be like Miley Cyrus. I don't mean swear. I don't mean all kinds of other things. But I just mean that conversational is not bad. You separate your blog from your website and have apparently done this purposefully. Why is this? Uh, wouldn't the traffic from your blog and the content and SEO benefit? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. No. So, um, well, so my primary business website, which uh, is Owner uh, Media Group, which is now OwnerMag.com, is a content site again. I don't use Human Business Works anymore. That doesn't exist. It's, it's there technically, but we're going to redirect it somewhere. Um, and then the chrisbrogan.com presence, the blog is less and less important, and it is still great for Google juice, but uh, anything with the URL chrisbrogan.com is kind of the deal, not the IP address, but the URL, so it's not a, you, you, you can have your blog nearby, but what I've learned is, uh, and I've learned this a lot from Brian Clark from Copyblogger, is make sure your content is very uh, pulled to the bottom so that you're selling more than showing off your content because your content doesn't make you money. Your content lures people in. I have this great article I've been working on for months, maybe even over a year. Three out of four parts are perfect, but one leg doesn't seem to work as well. Uh, how do I get unstuck? Lose the fourth concept, ask for help, wait for inspiration, publish the idea. Yeah, you know what I've done a lot of times, Mark? I've published an idea and said, I know this isn't right. And I've gone uh, you know, and, and asked people... Um, for the answers and it's it's been really great so that's been the best way I can tell you how to do it uh, so these are the answers uh, these are some of the blogging the master class question answers I'm so sorry for the delay in this uh, I've been trying to make it a, a very regular sort of a thing but uh, I don't I don't know I don't have a really good excuse but hopefully this is helpful and I will talk to you soon